everybody. First, I'd like to wish you a happy my birthday. I hope you spend it all with your friends and family. You know, people always say, you know, Julian, you shouldn't be so conceited. December is the month we celebrate Jesus' birthday. And I say wrong. I read the Bible. Jesus was born in June. This is the day we choose to celebrate his birthday. I was born in December, so I should get the credibility. <laughs> I'd like to give a shout out to my family members who showed up today. They don't usually support me, but here they are. i also like to give you a, 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 a shout out to my dad. I met him last week, but he's a great guy. <laughs> <laughs> he's in the back. And um, yeah, shout out to my father. First, I'd like to ask you guys, is anyone familiar with the singer slash lip sync lyricist Mariah Carey? <laughs> <laughs> we know her. Um, you know, Mariah Carey and I actually do have things in common, believe it or not. Uh, first, we're both 16 years old. Now, I'm 16 physically, but Mariah Carey is 16 mentally. See, she switched it up on me. You know, a lot of people give Mariah Carey flack because she married Nick Cannon. And you know, she's the diva, and she's the attention seeker, and I would be too. Okay, you know how hard it is to found an entire career based on lip syncing? <laughs> I'm sorry, I think that's incredible. And you know, I guess I miss this, you know, I'm usually on top of these things. She had a Disneyland wedding, like, six months ago. She's been married for like five years. Why is she having a wedding in 2013? <laughs> and, and then it dawned on me, I said, you know what, I just figured it out. She wanted to make sure this whole thing was going to last before she had her big fairy tale wedding. Because the last thing she needs is Nick Cannon messing up her image. Because if anyone by chance doesn't know, Mariah Carey loves who? Mariah Carey. <laughs> so she had this big wedding, she was Ariel, uh, Nick Cannon was Eric, they had this huge, they had the kids there. You know what's funny, I've never seen both twins in this, I honestly thought there was only one. And she just had them posting at each other. I didn't. I really didn't know there were two twins until recently. So she had the wedding, and eh. now I'd like to talk about. You know, she's also a quote-unquote actress. Anyone want to see her in the Butler? I say see her very specifically because we didn't hear her, which I'm down with. <laughs> I'm all for not having those people right here. Um, no. Next, I'd like to ask: Do we have any Housewife fans in the room here today? <laughs> Any of the housewives of Atlanta? Are you familiar with the program? No fans? I, it's really not. Um, you know the Barbara Walters of Housewives of Atlanta, Nene Leakes? She was in the hospital. Apparently she had attention deficit disorder. Um, there was a deficit in the attention she was receiving. And she was sick. She was very, very sick. But it's okay now. We got someone in there. They're revolving every 45 minutes. And someone's going in there to tell her that she matters. So everything's good. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of, you guys have, you know, I got a CNN news alert when Jennifer Aniston cut her hair. Because apparently there's nothing happening in Syria, nothing going on in Washington. The biggest news right now is that Jennifer Aniston got her hair cut. And I, for one, love her hair cut. It, it, however, it does remind me a lot of her relationships. Short and attention seeking. <laughs> but you know, I, people always say, why do you like Jennifer Aniston? I love Angelina Jolie. Angelina Jolie is the worst. She stole that poor old woman's husband right underneath her nose. And that is not cool. That is not cool. Next, you know we're gonna have to talk about Beyonce, right? I know everyone in here knows about Beyonce, Giselle knows Carter. I call her as my personal choice. <laughs> People are giving her this, uh, oh, you know, she releases an album without any preparation, any promotion, any singles. I'm like, Beyonce's so unoriginal. All two members of Destiny's Child have been releasing albums that were known about for years. <laughs> 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 releasing her own albums. If Beyonce does it, she gets the credit? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious. You know, I actually saw Michelle Williams' album in Walmart for $1.99. That's not even a joke. That's a real life. I remember I was at Target getting my parents' Christmas gifts, and the cashier said, we will give you this Kelly Rowland album for free with your purchase. Not only 
me that I take the album, I wrote a note about what happened at Target and sent it to Kelly Rowland's house. <laughs> Also, don't judge me. For like 10 years, I didn't know that Kelly Rowland and Sierra weren't the same person. I really thought that Kelly Rowland was just Sierra in a wig. I didn't. I figured it. Okay. Um, next, I would really like to talk about... <coughs> I'd like to talk about the R&B singer slash... Uh, oh, good. I don't even think there is a slash. She was an R&B singer, then nothing. Tony Braxton, you guys know. <laughs> um, her and I also have a lot of things. Um, for work. Um, neither one of us have jobs. Um, oh my god! We both live in houses that someone else pays for. It and hurts. Number it hurts. three, neither one of us can sing. Oh. It hurts. She made a singing career out of it, and I'm still trying to push my demo outside, and it's not working at all. But you know, I like her because she's very, she's very original. And a lot of people compare her to, you know, people of our generation, which she's not. She's an older singer, or, I mean, older singer. And people always, I found out people were comparing her to Keisha Cole. And at first, when I read that, I was like, oh, wait, who's Keisha Cole? So, after doing extensive research on her, I found out that she is an R&B singer turned box firm pusher saleswoman. And I found out that her days have been very available. You know, she's... She's free for booking. <laughs> and you know, at first I just like to get in some room. Uh, sir, what is it you do for a living? I'm a student. A student. Um, and ma'am, what is it you do for a living? Manage. And manage. I, and um, ma'am, what is it that you do for a living? <laughs> School. School. What grade are you? Fifth grade. All three of you make ten times more money than Keisha Cole ever <laughs> for her life. No, I want to talk about people who literally bleed money. Did you guys hear about the Chris and Bruce Jenner separation? Mm. Yes, that hit me harder more than my own parents' separation. <laughs> I have been messed up about it for months. But then it kind of hit me, you know, maybe they just got tired of being married to Freddy Krueger. And what? You know, when I say that, people are like, well, wait, which one is he talking about? <laughs> Chris got tired of being married to a man who wears his Halloween costume all 12 months of the year. Um, but you know, people say, oh, Bruce Jenner, his face is so messed up. Can we talk about Chris Jenner? At this point, it's just silicone, blood, and air. Like, there's not much. And they've been married for 22 years. My parents are married for five years, and they're ready to kill each other. I can only imagine what 22 years would be like. What do you even have to talk about? The conversation had to have been just about as bland as playing Marco Polo with Helen Keller. Like, what else is there? What do you talk about? <laughs> <laughs> oh, like, when Chris Jenner, I swear to God, I swear to you, when Chris Jenner asked for a divorce, Bruce Jenner was more relieved than Bill Clinton when Monica Lewinsky told him the test was negative. I swear to you. <laughs> In the public eye. And um, for my next joke, I'd like to ask my father and his wife to close their ears because this one's gonna stay. Um, a couple months ago, I was involved in a boat accident, okay. and I bought a propeller, and the propeller won. Um, and I had to get 19, uh, 10 stitches into my leg, 10 stitches into my leg, and. You know, the stitches didn't hurt, uh, but the, what hurt was the next day I went to my father's church. And you know, for those of you who don't know, my father's church, the thing that gets to me is, they're a real mega church, you know? It's like a concert, like going to a Bon Jovi concert, minus the week. It's really great, except the, the, the sanctuary is about the size of this room, maybe a little smaller. I swear to God, I take tithes in the room five times for every service. And I wore shorts, but you know, my stitches were raw and were hurting. And I guess one of the ushers saw me, and those ushers, they don't play around. I've seen those ushers pull tambourines out of nowhere in that church. <laughs> they saw the stitches, and they decided that it was appropriate to rebuke the demon that was in my knee. So I got, they laid hands on me in the pulpit, and it got to the part, you know, you're supposed to fall out in the face like you do on TV. So the usher, she got my hands, and was like, hey, this is the part. Fall out on 
down in the spirit. And I was like, no, 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 ma'am. I'm not going down like that. I'm not going to fall out into the spirit. So she said, all right. This is, this is, you're holding up service. This is the part where you fall out into the spirit. I said, no, I'm not falling out into the spirit. So then she pushes me down to the floor. I hit my head on the vestibule. And I wake up in the fetal position in a uh, red uh, in a red velvet blanket. <laughs> And needless to say, that'll be the last time that I attend church with my father. Thanks, you guys. For